This video is sponsored by Many Worlds Tavern. Hey everyone, my name is Neil and this is Real Terrain Hobbies, making all things miniature like this incredibly huge, over the top, ridiculously scaled D&D &D castle. So I've been building this castle for the better part of probably a year and a half. I don't know off the top of my head, but I'm assuming somewhere around that mark. And recently we put together this base for this castle. This was the Tallenberg Castle from Kingdom Come Deliverance. We're building an ocean at the base of these cliffs. Now we're gonna be making some crazy ocean water effects, some big crashing waves. Gonna be using some other techniques for that. But I also was wanting to create a really cool medieval lighthouse that the wave is just going to be kind of coming in and bursting once it hits this thing. So I'm really looking to improve what I've done in the past with water, specifically with the wizard tower. But that's the subject matter for a different video. In this video, we're going to be dealing with fire. But things don't go exactly as planned. So I've recently partnered with a company called Muse Kits. And what they do is they create these art boxes that they put out to have a subscription service. And they also work with creators and help them to tailor a box specifically for their audience. Now I've been working closely with them on a regular basis to develop a box specifically for this hobby. And it just so happens to be on sale right now at this very moment. This kit is no slouch. This is a huge kit. It's coming in at over 12 pounds. It's a massive brick, so much packed into this thing. Not only is there a massive array of tools included in the kit, but I also really wanted to make sure there was a ton of extra materials to go beyond the main project so you can keep on building and making realistic high quality projects it comes with this amazing blacksmith kit and i designed this thing in a 3d program called blender which was then flattened out into a 2d shape and then sent off to a laser cutting company who helped me transform the template into a kit that you can assemble and put together for yourself now assembling the kit is fun enough but the real fun and excitement comes from actually using all the materials and tools from the kit and transforming it into this beautiful work of art. Now because I'm doing this through Muse Kits, they are the absolute experts in putting these things together and if you were to buy all this stuff off the shelf from Amazon or wherever, this would be $330 worth of tools and materials. We're giving this out for only $199. That right there completely blows my mind and this is my way of being able to give back to you guys something really incredible and something that I really have always wanted to do. Get you guys making this stuff for yourself. And on top of that, you're going to be supporting Real Terrain Hobbies. You're supporting me and the channel, and that is incredible. Now, there's a limited quantity of these things, so they're selling fast. Christmas is coming quick, and this makes for the absolute perfect gift. And when you're opening this thing up, it's like opening a box full of presents, like a lot of presents. Link is down below. Now, instead of the blacksmith, we're going to be making the lighthouse using the kit for the castle project and see whether or not it actually has what it takes to make something worthy of a beautiful project like our castle. Now, in starting a new project, you're going to be needing some base material for the actual skeleton. The blacksmith comes with a chipboard template, but you're going to be needing extra materials to make new buildings. So in this case, I'm going to be using a cereal box. You can use also Amazon boxes, cardboard, foam core, and I'm also using these brown paper bags from the grocery store as filler. And I guess it's probably important at this point to tell you exactly what the heck I'm making here. This is a rock. This is what our lighthouse is going to be sitting on. Now for forming the rocky texture on this thing, we're going to be using a product from the kit called Fast Mache, and it looks a little something like this. As you can see, it's a lot of fun to play with. It's kind of like a sticky dough. Now inside that crumpled paper, you can see there's a lot of crevices and little holes that the stuff can kind of get filled in and get wasted. So I'm going to put some paper on top. This way we get a nice smooth surface to apply the fast mache on without any excess waste. Now it's time for the lighthouse itself. I have these coasters here, these six-sided hexagonal, I think it's hex, hexagonal, yeah. But anyway, 
that's what we got, so that's what our shape of our lighthouse is going to be. Our beautiful Amazon box is now the base for our lovely lighthouse, as simple as that. All right, so I decided here that I want to make the base of this lighthouse out of stone, and for that we're going to be using cork. It's the perfect material for this, lots of that included in the kit as well. And I'm just making some buttresses on the side, stacked up as you can see here. So it's basically going to be a wooden structure up here with plaster, the rock foundation, and then up top here, I don't know if I'm gonna go like with a rock kind of vibe, something that's fire resistant or keep it more wood. We'll see you when we get there. I got an idea what I'm gonna do with the rest though. So let's get started on that. Grabbing our trusty balsa out of this kit, uh, I meant to include a lot of extra balsa in here so you can continue on with other projects just like this. So the balsa is basically used for all that beautiful trim work that you see on your typical medieval structure. That's a half timbered look, typical kind of of your medieval fantasy buildings. If you're having trouble figuring out how to kind of apply this wood, there are a ton of references. Just Google medieval half timber buildings or hop into your favorite video game of choice and take some inspiration from the architecture in there. Speaking of inspiration, a lot of the time I need to be in the right frame of mind to help me get into that creative mode and really get inspired for a project. That's where a really, really good cup of coffee comes in handy to put me in the right mood. And that's where this video's sponsor, Many Worlds Tavern, comes to the rescue. Many Worlds Tavern is an online coffee company providing coffee for game night. Their featured product is in limited quantities called Treasured Realm, of which only 400 bags are available each month, and each order comes with a numbered card, a limited edition sticker, a D&D 5e magic item, and a set of dice. The concept of a company providing coffee specifically for game night has them as my absolute number one favorite coffee company period. Their coffee is absolutely amazing. Specifically the long dark roast, as I'm a dark roast kind of guy. Absolutely perfection. And on top of that, they have a giving back program where they donate $1 of every bag of coffee sold to support gaming related nonprofits. The seasons are changing here in Canada and the smell of winter is in the air. This is one of my favorite times of year along with spring and having a Many Worlds Tavern cup of coffee in hand is the absolute perfect way to enjoy the outdoors in this season. I've got a one shot D&D game coming this Friday and you can bet I'm going to be sharing some Many Worlds Tavern coffee with my fellow role players. The first 100 of you viewers to use the code RealTrain10 at checkout will Will receive 10% off. Use the link in the description below. Thank you, Many Worlds Tavern, once again for sponsoring this video. Okay, I'm gonna try a new technique here. Something uh, that I haven't done before. I'm going to put some wood paneling on here and then have the plaster crack off, flake off some of this wood to expose the under wood, and that's just gonna give it more character, more. Mm. So if you didn't quite understand what I'm saying, there will be revealed in just a second, but we need to shave down the timbers first, make them nice and thin. We're basically just going to be applying some plaster over top of this, then having it flake off to show kind of the inner structure that this is a full wooden building. So things have gotten a little out of hand in terms of size. I adding on all the brick made this a little too big. So now I got to extend the base. I'm just going to add a little extra cardboard some extra fast mache and voila, problem averted. Now it's time for some painting. Now in your kit comes a nice selection of craft paints. We have 10 different paints. So we're gonna be using some white and black here to make a nice gray base, both for the stone and for the stone big rock thing below. Check out that beautiful gray stone. Now the kit actually comes with a wood stain as well. This is a water-based non-toxic wood stain, so don't worry about that. And it really adds a lot of character to your wood and it's just a perfect option for that. Moving on to the Permastone Plaster. Now I'm a big fan of plaster on my models. This is a very realistic technique. It's similar to the wattle and daub that they actually use when building these structures in the past. And it just creates the perfect realistic effect for any sort of medieval fantasy structure. Now this stage can seem probably extremely intimidating for a lot of people. It gets very messy. The plaster you can see gets all over the wood 
and all over places you basically don't want it. But it's actually very easy to clean up. You can see I'm using my tools here later on to scrape it off. And whatever is left is actually going to be kind of adding some realism anyway. And then on top of that, it really absorbs washes well, causing whatever residue is left on the wood to almost completely vanish as if it's not even there. Now with the plastering done, it's time to affix this lighthouse to the base. We're going to use some more fast mache to blend things in. Then we can move on to finishing off the top of our lighthouse. We need a nice fire resistant top, hence the slate stone here that our bezier, our bezier, the, the big cauldron of fire will be sitting on. And to maintain a little bit of continuity with the Talenberg Castle, I'm using the same style of railing that we had used on that. All right, so we moved the lighthouse on to the big castle board. Now, proportionally, things are looking good. It's a little larger than I thought, but it actually is looking good. But now we're just doing some painting. Uh, so I used a white, a yellow, and a brown to create the same color as the boff color or the beige color on the castle itself. I'm really trying hard to match things up to that using the same techniques that I used on the castle to make this thing match up well. As you can see, we're splashing a ton of black onto this thing. This is a step that really makes the details pop and adds a lot of character to the model. Now it's essential that the plaster is actually painted first before adding any washes. It's very absorbing. We want that in some areas and not in others. Remember how we talked about the plaster getting into the wood grain? Well, this stuff makes that essentially vanish. Now keep in mind that realistically, you would be getting plaster all over the place too during the construction phase. It would be getting in the wood. So if it does get a little bit messy, well, consider that extra realism. Alright, we're moving on to some fire. Now for this project, I really, really wanted a dragon, something that had a very cool pose. I found this guy from Lord of the Print, just an incredibly dynamic pose, this guy swooping down in for the attacks. I thought this would make for the perfect model and the perfect guy to test out my new Sonic Mighty 8K 3D printer. This thing is an absolute beast and the detail is phenomenal. Now moving on to the fire. So I got this technique from good old boy Lai hobby time. This is just so amazing. When I first saw it, he did a dragon little dial himself. And this, uh, the fire effect is just so crazy. So good, so simple. So it involves those little noodle lights as he likes to call them. I ordered those off Alibaba and I got a whole stash of them. So what I'm gonna do for the fire here is use this piece of wire and it's gonna be the main structure that holds everything everything together here. That scared the flipping crap out of me. Now that we've got our little neck hole drilled out, I'm going to be using some JB Weld. This stuff is a two-part epoxy that is meant for steel. It binds very well. That's what I use to fasten the wire into his throat. Now these are the battery packs that I'm using. Nice and condensed. These are the little wafer batteries, cell batteries. And the reason I went with that is I want them to be very lightweight. This dragon is going to be portable, meaning not attached to any fixed base. It can be moved around. These coin cell battery packs are light enough that this can just go on the end of the flame and actually be hidden, or at least the goal is to have them hidden within the cotton that we'll be using. Now, I wanted this fire to look extremely menacing and convincing, so I added a second light on there just to be safe. Now it's time to paint up our dragon.
this is the fun part. When doing the actual flame, I used cotton balls. And going with the cotton balls, I kind of unintentionally got some really cool and dynamic swirls and different kind of motions, like a, a really fluid, fiery look that I wasn't really expecting to get. You'll see exactly how well this looks in just a second. Now at the end there, I'm using some batting. This is from my wife's sewing kit. It was a great material to kind of switch to for the big black smoke at the end of this flame. So I used the black ink on that, and then we're gonna be using both the yellow and the red ink. Now I was initially planning to go with just an orange, but Michael from over at Natwind Video suggested doing the yellow first with the red over top. And man, so happy I did. The yellow is a hotter flame while the red is the cooler. So naturally the outside of the flame will be cooling off and turning red. And it's just so convincing. This airbrushing technique is absolutely perfect for this. Now, I was debating whether or not to make a roof for this thing, you know, fire, wood, doesn't go good together, but it just didn't look right having nothing there. So I came up with this design. I'm gonna leave one of the panels open to allow for the smoke and the heat to escape. So there are more shingles in the kit than you need for the blacksmith. So that's what I'm gonna use for this roof. All right. Typically, I like to use tile grout for dirt, for the dirt effects on my terrain, various terrains, and then put the flocking and all the grasses on top of that. However, you might not have any on hand or you don't want to go out and buy any. An alternative is just to go out, grab your shovel, scoop up some dirt, and use dirt. Yes, I hope your mind is thoroughly blown. But now it's on to the grass tufts. We have three different sets, beautiful sets of tufts included in the kit. We're actually going to use some clump foliage as well, which are the little bushes there that you see. Those are included in there too. Two different shades of those guys. Now it's time we added in our doorway again using more balsa. Now here's a little trick again from Nat1 videos. You can take the little flame off the end of these tea lights. There's two included in the box, by the way, and you can make your own stylized flame using hot glue. Next, I'm gonna take some hardboard from the kit, cut out a circle and use this as the base for the dragon. We're actually gonna be using some mulch, some big bark chunks as well. These make for awesome, rocky kind of cliff-like terrain. And we're gonna transform this into a beautiful base for our dragon. Again, pop that fast mache into the oven for a couple hours at 200 and you are good to go. It was at this moment I should have known this was a really, really dumb idea. That actually happened. Keep it cool, Neil. Keep it cool, Neil. <laughs> okay, I could have screamed in rage and just destroyed what was left of this thing, but I took a deep breath, looked around, and it was only five pieces. Each wing was still intact, and the tail had just broken in two spots. Well, that was it. Now all that's left is to mount the dragon. I would have went with a clear acrylic rod. I just didn't have the time. I will be doing that later. Now it's just to test out the fire. She's nice and toasty warm. Check out that glow. Gonna add our light to our lighthouse. Take some nice glamour shots here and head out to the garage and see if this is gonna do this castle justice. Now for the moment of truth, was the kid able to deliver? Can we put this thing up with our castle? Well, you be the judge. In my opinion, we absolutely nailed it.
Coming up, I'm going to be using the kit to recreate my most favorite build ever, the Medieval Tavern. The box includes a digital template for you to recreate this masterpiece on your own. Now I've created a lot of projects over the years that I'm extremely proud of. But honestly, this box is just something else and is my way of giving back to you guys. Something that is more than just the video. Something that will bring people together and bring a sense of pride to each and every one of you. Uh, my name is Neil. We're in a uh, little redneck Saskatchewan, Canada here. And uh, we're going to take this thing up a notch. We're going to take this thing to a whole other level of epic. How are we going to do that? Well, we're going to take this here castle behind us. And add in a little a lighthouse right here. Because uh, lighthouses are good for safety. And uh, that's just what we're going to do. Oh, and one more thing. We got ourselves here with this build too. Fire, breathing, dragon. That's right. Fire, breathing, dragon. It's gonna be good. Now this key right here is how we're gonna build this sucker. Well, that did not work out as planned. 